Good afternoon. Yesterday was a sad day in American history. Yesterday was a dark day in the history of this great republic. Any day when we would have, Americans would have watched their TV and seen a, seen a mob storming the United States Capitol would have been a bad day, a horrible day. Any day when Americans saw on their TV the view of the Senate chamber occupied by a mob, any day when they would have seen on their screen a mob storming into the Capitol through the rotunda, into the Senate chamber, into the House chamber, and occupying it would have been a horrible, horrible day. But what was going on in the Capitol yesterday when the mob did that makes it a direct attack on the Constitution, on everything that we hold dear. For what was going on at that moment, that very moment, was the process of counting the votes the President of the United States. A solemn process, a process prescribed by law and carried out with great dignity every four years. That fact made this a horribly tragic day. Last night, as I'm sure most Americans were doing, Fran and I were focused on our TV screen, watching the images of the Capitol, really in, in disbelief and in shock. We tried to comprehend what was going on, tried to make some sense of it, and we saw mid-evening an interview with constitutional scholar Jonathan Turley. Turley said something that Fran and I thought was very, very apt, very correct, and something that we all need to think about. And I'll quote. What we're seeing is chilling for us because it shows a crisis of faith. That is what the Constitution is. It's a leap of faith that we all take together. The people who scale the walls have lost their faith. And the question for our country is, how much of America is now faithless? Faith, faith in our Constitution, faith in the rule of law. That faith has gotten us through a lot of tough times. A belief in ourselves. This faith in the Constitution, and faith in the rule of law is what binds us together. We are a nation whose peoples are drawn from all over the world, who have in common, not a common ancestry for all of us, not a common creed, not a common race, but rather a faith, a faith in our country, a faith in our constitution, a faith in our system of justice. We are truly bound together by that. We are truly bound together by a belief in a basic core set of values. The first presidential race that I focused on as a child was in 1960, Richard Nixon, John Kennedy. 
When Kennedy won, many Republicans urged him, urged Nixon, urged Nixon to contest the election, to fight it out, to go to court, believing that the election had been stolen from him by the Democrat political machine in Chicago. Nixon said no. It will divide the country. I won't do it. In January then of 1961, it was his obligation to preside over the United States Senate as the vice president. And it was his obligation, which he fulfilled in declaring that John F. Kennedy was elected president of the United States. Years later, he was a member of the United States Congress, first in the House, then in the Senate. I was honored to be in the chamber when the houses met and the counting of the ballots occurred. I brought my children, granted my children, to see it on more than one occasion every four years. I did that because I wanted to see them to see our system, our great constitution being played out, the terms of that constitution being accepted by winners and losers. In 2001, we watched as Vice President Al Gore, as Vice President, after an election that had gone all the way to the United States Supreme Court, declared George W. Bush to be President of the United States. Now, I imagine that to this day, Gore and many other Americans still believe that he won. Yet, peaceful transfer of power took place nonetheless. Theodore White, in his landmark book, The Making of the President, 1960, described America's success in transferring, transferring power peacefully this way. Heroes and philosophers, brave men and vile, have since Rome and Athens tried to make this particular manner of transfer of power work effectively. No people have succeeded at it better or over a longer period of time than the Americans. Early this morning, Vice President Pence, senators, House members, once again carried out their solemn duty and made the system work. In spite of what had occurred earlier in the day. When thugs stormed our Capitol building, desecrating, defiling not only the structure itself, but the ideals that bind us together as Americans. They made it work. They did their job. What happened yesterday was devastating. It was despicable. But in spite of the violent attempts to stop our democratic process to stop an election. What happened last night when our vice president and Congress returned to the Capitol was a sign of great strength and unity and hope. The system worked, the Constitution held. Congress and the vice president were not deterred in carrying out their constitutional responsibility. They were not deterred in carrying out the will of the people. And they were not stopped from doing what was right. I thank them for doing their job amidst chaos, violence, and danger to themselves in certifying the results of the election of our next president and vice president. I want to thank the vice president for his statement earlier in the day that he would follow the Constitution, he would follow the laws as laid out. I want to thank Leader Mitch McConnell. What he had described as the most important vote of his career. I served with him, and he is an honorable man. His speech was an honorable speech. No one cares more 
about the Constitution than Mitch McConnell. But I thank all the members who were there. President Trump's continued refusal to accept the election results without producing credible evidence of a rigged election has started a fire that has threatened to burn down our democracy. This incendiary speech yesterday, when he gave preceding the march that he gave to the protesters, served only to fan those flames encouraging the mob behavior that ensued. Yesterday's acts were shameful and all Americans must denounce them. Even those Americans who feel incorrectly that Donald Trump won. And so as it has been with every single presidential election in American history, it is time to accept the election results, to accept the will of the people, so we may begin to move forward and we may begin to heal. We need to come together as a people. We need to work together. We must always remember what President Lincoln once said, we're not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies, though passion may have strained, must not break our bonds of affection. Because our shared bonds as Americans will always be stronger than our differences. What binds us together so much more than what tears us apart. We must remind ourselves that we are resilient people. We are a strong people. And we are a people who unite in the toughest of times. Right now, we're facing some tough times, not just about this election. We have other challenges. We're fighting a common enemy across all 50 states and right here in Ohio, and that's the coronavirus. We have challenges in making sure every child in this state and in this country receives a good education. We have poverty to deal with. We have so many other problems where there really are not partisan differences. We have to remember what binds us together. Remember that each other, we're not the enemies of each other. We have enemies out there. These are things that we must do. We must fight, fight the COVID. We must pull together. We must educate our kids. With renewed faith, we can tackle these challenges together and we can move forward. United States Senate Chaplain, Barry Black, and the prayer he delivered early this morning as our US Senate closed its session following the certification of the votes should inspire us to do just that and offers the words that we need to begin to heal. Here is a portion of his prayer. Lord, you have helped us remember that we need to see in each other a common humanity that reflects your image. You have strengthened our resolve to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, domestic as well as foreign. Use us to bring healing and unity to our hurting and divided nation and world. Thank you for what you have blessed. Thank you for what you have blessed our lawmakers to accomplish in spite of threats to liberty. Bless and keep us. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to do your will and guide our feet, guide our feet on the path of peace. And may God bless America.